In this video, I'm going to try and explain how the top framing plates provide you with a structural connection. Let's start with the corner. The corners can lap like you see here in either direction. So this top plate can lap over bottom plate. For example, the right side or the right wall over the left wall as shown in this illustration, or we could reverse it and have the bottom plate butt the bottom plate on this wall and then the top plate lap over the bottom plate on this wall. Usually a connection like this requires between three and four uh, D nails, so that would be three individual D nails driven down um, and uh, equally distributed here. I remember we used to just put three in, by the way, that was real common, but uh, you would need to get more information uh, on that from a structural engineer. Remember, I am not a structural engineer and just providing you with a few examples of the way things can go together. Let's pan out here. And I'm going to try, and I understand you can't see this, but I'm just going to use this as uh, to give you an idea of how some of these connections work. So if you can see, we have a bottom plate here that runs from this wall to here, right over this cripple, and uh, the or uh, jack stud. And we have a plate here, and then the next plate, bottom top framing plate, runs there all the way over to here. And then last but not least, the other one runs all the way to here with individual plates on the top that might not actually be helping us make a continuous connection with our plate. Now the minimum requirement is 48 inches or 4 feet between these continuous breaks. And sometimes it's going to create a problem when we have situations like this. The example I'm providing you with here should be acceptable by most structural engineers. You are using um, to make the connection, to connect the two plates here. You need a minimum of four feet from the break to the next break and then you need a certain amount of nails. Now, when I first started working, we used to just put uh, two nails on each side of these breaks. That was it. Now, some of the engineers, I believe, there were times, jobs where I ran into where we were putting 16 nails on each side of the break. It really was nuts, but uh, again, this, these are people who know what they're doing. We are just assemblers of the products. So here we can see the next break is over here. I don't know if it's if you can see that in the picture, but these breaks aren't aren't going to make a difference because the bottom plate uh, basically takes the present. The next tie is going to be over this plate here. If there was a break here, this would be a totally different uh, scenario. It would require a strap there. And I'm going to try and make a few different, uh, provide you with a few examples to where you can understand what's going on here. Something like this, as long as you have an eight foot board here and the break is exactly in the middle of that board, you're not going to have a problem. That should be acceptable for a structural engineer. Let's just say, for example, this was a seven foot wall then no matter what you are going to have a problem here if you put the brake there and it will require a strap so and the end here so as long as we have a continuous plate these brakes won't make a difference only thing it's only time it's going to make a difference is if there is a break in the plate and this i I'm, i know i'm focusing on the bottom plate but the same thing is true on the top plate if there was a break in any distance on the bottom plate between the top plate, it's less than four foot, you got a problem. So, you know, let's just say that this right here is a five foot wall and I, I have a break that's right here, right over this stud here. I'm going to need a strap. So I hope that makes sense. Now, the reason why I made the video was because someone wanted to know if they could actually notch the top plate, what it would actually do to the building. They were going to install larger ceiling joist. And in order to get the ceiling joist in, one of their suggestions was actually to notch the top plate. 
If you do this and it's a two plate uh, framed wall, then uh, you would probably be better off putting a stud underneath the joist because I really don't know if, uh, if you had a stud, let's just say over here, uh, eight inches away from here and then eight inches away from here. I don't really know if a single plate would carry that weight. I say that, I've seen it plenty of times in older homes. Uh, I will leave that up to you. But something like this, once you have broken the connection in the plate, will require a strap. Now here's a common problem, and this is probably going to be the, the reason why most people actually view this video. What if you actually need to make a repair? So you have some termite damage and one of the plates needs to be repaired. For example, here we have, let's just say, about a 36 inch plate that needs to be re repaired. Well, the biggest problem with something like this, you cut the plate out, you replace it, is that you don't know where the other breaks are going to be on the side of the walls unless you remove more of the interior drywall plaster or you remove the exterior siding or stucco, whatever it is you have on the outside. So this isn't always going to be easy. Um, I would suggest if you're doing these on your own, just make sure that you put a strap on there to um, as, as, a, as one of those just in cases. Let's see if I can provide you with a better idea of what would need to be done. You have your brakes and then you have your straps. These straps will actually center on the brakes. This is a common construction practice. Here you can see the brake and the center of the strap. And some straps actually have a little point, a little mark that, that shows the center to help you line them up also. I just drew in some straps. Let's just say these are 10 inches, 12 inches long. The most building inspectors, I mean the building engineers, require a four foot long strap. Usually require, if it's a Simpson product, usually requires an MST 30, I mean 48. And this thing is a monster. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this strap would actually look like. It is huge. Now here, I off-centered the strap. The center of the strap would be here. If In a situation like this, I would actually need to move the strap over. The center of the strap needs to be in the center of the brake. And since this is actually something that is, uh, let's just say, an inch and a half wide gap in the strap, in the plates, in between the plates, it might actually require a totally different scenario might actually require a different strap or a different method to do this repair. So to, to do this type of repair with an MST 48, you would actually need to move it over, which means you would have to somehow bend this thick strap. I think this strap is like, it's almost a quarter of an inch thick. It's at least an eighth of an inch thick. And it's heavy duty metal, it's hard to bend. I don't even know if you could bend it around the corner like that. I shouldn't say that, they got to have a machine that would do it or uh, someone with uh, a nice uh, nice sized hammer, maybe they could do it. So anyway, this is about it for this section. The next section of the video, I'm going to actually provide you with things that will work and will not work in case you're having a few more questions about uh, what you would need to put a strap on and what you wouldn't. Here are a few examples. This one here will require a strap. You have a plate that's less than four foot long, so that is a gimme. The next one on our list is kind of questionable, but will not require a strap if the bottom plate continues over. Because here you can see, I'm going to pan out a little bit. Here you can see that it's not even close to four foot. The break goes away, so this bottom plate can carry a lot. Um, or it's going to really do nice as a structural tie without having these breaks here affecting anything. So this right here is a real common problem in the construction business. You're going to have a break right next to a channel. If this break is within four feet of this break, you could, uh, could require a strap. And I'm going to go into a few more details about that uh, here in a second. Some of these are questionable. This would not require a strap. You have a break, and then of course four feet away on each side, plenty of room. 
Let's go ahead and turn the corner here. A break here at the top. Um, yes, this would definitely require a strap. All you would need to do to fix this is make sure that this is at least four feet long. Next step, we have a break here. And again, as long as this plate is continuous, is not near this within 48 inches, this isn't going to be a problem. Now here's where something might be questionable. You have a break here, uh, and it's, it's, it's uh, let's just say it's five feet away from this. You've got plenty of room here. But you have a break in the plate here. Would, this, would something like this require a strap? And I don't think it would. But it actually could be questionable. Yeah, I could question it because from here you do not have a continuous four foot plate. But you would have a lot to nail this plate to. So I think that by the time you're done nailing it, something like this I wouldn't think would require a strap. But if you read the plans, if you read the plans uh, and it says it cannot be four foot cannot be a break within a four foot space, then something like this might require a strap. So it give you a better idea there, putting it, viewing it from the center. So something like that just might require a strap. Okay, I spent enough time on this video, off to the next one.